video will explain the reversible ResNet architecture, the RevNet. The key idea here is to do backpropagation without storing the intermediate activations. So the headline is that the RevNet is an algorithm to restructure convolutional blocks such that the activation doesn't need to be stored. So typically as you would do a forward pass through the network, you would store all of those intermediate activations to use as backpropagation. So with the RevNet uh, restructuring of the convolutional block, you're trading off computation for more memory. So here's the idea of the reversible block. You split the input X into two inputs, X1 and X2 along the channel dimension, and then Y1 and Y2 are also divided in this way, and they're constructed from the each of the X1 and X2. So this diagram shows what the forward pass of this would look like. The X1 and X2 are split along the channel dimension, and then they're used to compute the Y1 and Y2, such that if you have Y, you can just split along the channel axis and then use this to derive x1 and x2 and thus x. So in this sense, if you have y, you split it up into y1 and y2, and then you use these intermediate functions to get back the x1 and x2. So this way, you don't need to store the intermediate activations, you just need to store the activation from the very last layer, and then you can use this uh, propagation rule to derive the activations throughout the network. So overall, this is the uh, RevNet backpropagation algorithm, and so the key difference here is that you have to do like another forward pass. So usually if you needed n computation for the forward pass and 2n for the back prop, now you're going to need 3n for the back prop because you're going to have to do one more forward like computation in each of these blocks to derive the input from the activations. So this is overall, this is 33% more computation than the original uh, block would be. So here's a comparison with other, there, there are some other techniques that they mentioned, I didn't really get into the details of them, but uh, this is like a state of the art in the spatial complexity of storing activations. You only need a constant amount of memory for the activations in the very last layer of the network. So these are some of the architectures that they tested. They have the ResNet32 compared to this modification, ReVNet38, and then uh, div, you know other slight modifications, and then they test on the CIFAR 10 and 100 and ImageNet datasets. So this is the big uh, impressive performance that they present is that uh, it's only slightly worse than the ResNet on CIFAR 10, CIFAR 100, and ImageNet, even when you uh, restructure it in this way. And the reason that it's slightly uh, worse and not you know, exactly the same is because there's some uh, numerical error when you're approximating it in this way, but I didn't really completely get into the details of that. So this is the ResNet block. And so in this case, it's F that we're replacing with this reversible block. You can also imagine if you have like a channel-wise concatenation, like in the ResNet blocks, usually it's uh, the next features are X plus F of X. So like you're adding it at each location, you're adding the features. But you could also imagine like concatenating and kind of just like stacking along the previous layer's features along the channel dimension. So if you did that, it's really straightforward to see how you could reverse it as well, because if you have this uh, layer Y, these activations Y, and then they're split such that it's Y1 and Y2, and Y2 are just the previous layer's activations stacked onto the back of this Y1, then you can easily just take the Y2, and then you can pass it through the F function to get out the Y1. So this is just sort of like an introduction to how this reversibility can work to allow you to go back into the network in different ways of structuring your networks. So the big takeaway is that it's 33% more computation required, but you save yourself a ton of memory. So this is really useful for larger batch sizes, networks, and just the size of your intermediate feature maps and whatnot. A frequent problem that I encounter is running out of GPU memory, and this is a really great method for avoiding that. So thanks for watching this video uh, from Henry AI Labs. Please subscribe for more videos on deep learning.